We've got a goalkeeper who's played in the Premiership, played in the Championship. Unfortunately, he cancelled and we've got this, Harry. <laughs> No, he's played 521 games, right. letting 958 <laughs> goals. And he went, come on then, Robbo, you all want to show us. Show us your new boots. He went, just a little pair of umbrals, opened it. It's just a groundskeeper's boots in there. <laughs> Robbo comes in and he stands at the head of the table. There used to be a table in the middle of the changing room. And he went, I'm the new manager. And without a second's hesitation, everyone in floods of laughter. <laughs> Them two come on the screen. <laughs> And then uh, he goes, yeah, we, what we try and do, we try and do the old uh, good pop, bad pop. <laughs> Jordan, welcome back. All right, pal. Mate, it's good to see you actually alive this week. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a rough one last week. Sorry, mate. I apologise for my performance. Mate, you was horrendous. <laughs> I know, there was nothing I could do. You know, you just like flew and cold and minging. I just... You didn't contribute to the podcast whatsoever. No, I, didn't, I didn't contribute in footy this week either. I was... Crap, so I was genuinely ill, so sorry guys. I don't mind to be honest, uh, I got I got double pay. I did, <laughs> I did twice as much work. But yeah, obviously massive thank you once again to Bet365 for sponsoring the pod. Cheers. Makes guys. it all possible. Uh, pretty sure they'll be invoicing you for your money back, Jordan, for last week's. Yeah, I'll send you that back, lads. It was shocking that it was um I just didn't want to be here. <laughs> I really didn't. <laughs> so, uh, what, what's happened this week with uh football then? How are you getting on? Still flying uh, high? Still flying high. We was 1-0 down, I think, after 80 mins, 1-3-1. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it was good. Who was that against? Bastard. Uh, Bassford. Bassford. <laughs> Bastard FC. Right. Uh, against one of your old players. Oh, you mentioned him, yeah. Yeah, Jack Lewis. I don't He's think a... he was that asked about the score, because after the game, he just said, tell said to said hello, I've been listening to the podcast. Oh, what a guy. <laughs> nice, to, nice to see you, Jack. Hope you're doing well, pal. He's on, uh, he's on loan from Leicester. So, Basford have tweeted their highlights out, and it's just on a VO above our dugout. Yeah. And Troy Deeney's been sacked for 10 times less than what Vernon John was saying about me while I was playing. It's, <laughs> what the hell, what it's, have you heard? Honestly, fucking brilliant. Right, so, I missed an header in the first half. You just hit, on the highlights, you just hit, oh, fuck off, John, and that's a tapid from John <laughs> Yeah. And then I missed a shot in the second half, and Burn gets really personal. <laughs> He's just like, what the fuck are you doing? You got all the time in the world, you bow legged fucking idiot. <laughs> You're spot on though. You can hear it clear as day as well. It's and bad. what and, and Basford have put that out on there. Yeah, well, they just tweet the highlights. I don't think they listen to oh, it. Right, okay. so, but it's just all on there. It's mint. So you've been having so you have a bit of um so you feel for trading, do you? Yeah, I just think what well, you can say what you want. I don't know what he said. I've not you know? heard it if I'm honest. He just said he's one of his players had a stinker basically, and he was crap. But in an interview, I mean, it's not ideal. Probably wouldn't say it, but I don't think it's a sackable offence once your head's gone. No, I think that's the thing because he's he's been a player and he's obviously really passionate. It's his first kind of managerial role, and it it's one of them where, as a player and a manager, you you have that out in the dressing room, don't you? Yeah. In the change room, you have it out, and then when you come out into the press, you're supposed to show support for your supposed players. Supposed to protect him. Yeah. yeah. But passion's passion, isn't it? Like my gaffers. Yeah, like your gaffers, yeah. <laughs> Obviously not interested in anything. So just going back to last week's performance. Oh, don't. I mentioned, I've been getting hammered all week. Like, come on. You should do. My stepdad. So my stepdad and my mum, they listen to the, the podcast every now and again. But last week, because the big Man United fans and obviously Clayton Blackmore was on, they put it up on YouTube. So, you know, like you can do like a, a screen share and you can... Get it from your iPad. They've only just got that in Burnley. Yeah, so they were, but yeah, they've only just got the internet. It's got in a smart TV. It's got BBC One. Well done, guys. So, so they were buzzing that they'd got it up on screen. So they, they were like, so my stepdad rang me and he was like, I said, oh, me and your mum watched uh, that podcast, Clayton Blackmore. And he went, just a quick question. <laughs> I went, yeah. He went, what does that Jordan do? He went, I was I went, I went what do you mean? He went, he didn't contribute one thing. I don't think he asked a question. And he said, why did you bring him on board? <laughs> and I, said, I brought you on board. Yeah. I said, to be fair, Fred, I said, Jordan brought me on board back at the beginning. He went, well, he didn't do much. And, uh, and you can tell him as well, he's got a right shit haircut. <laughs> Just getting peppered all week for being ill. <laughs> She's from a 70-year-old man. Yeah, fuck off, Fred. <laughs> so, uh, did, you, did you not say I was ill? Did you not back me up? No, I said you like that every week, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's the crack? Today. So we have got a guest on, 
Well, we have we've got a goalkeeper who's played in the Premiership, played in the Championship, gone down through the leagues, gone into non-league, got some brilliant stories. Unfortunately, he cancelled and we've got this shower of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he cancelled at four o'clock last night, so we've had to bring in non-league's finest, Grant Shenton. <laughs> Grant Shenton, welcome everybody. Thank you. You all right, pal? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. Uh, tired. Long journey back yesterday from London, but yeah, I'm all right. What are we doing in London? I uh, need the teeth sorted. <laughs> 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 Not yet, no. That's just a pre-op at the end of the year. Uh, just work things, boring stuff. Nothing exciting about Yeah, you that. are boring now, aren't you? you used to Proper be. Proper old, mate, yeah. I had to grow up, though. Playing with you lot for so long, ruined my potential marriage, which is now a marriage, so I can't sabotage that anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah. You, yeah, you've told me about Grant, obviously. I, I think goalkeepers are mental anyway. Like, you have to have some kind of a... Yeah. I think screw loose when you're coming out 100 miles an hour diving at someone's feet or... Yeah, yeah. Either that or you're the last pick in PE and, <laughs> and you end up being a goalkeeper because you can't find everything else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're I took a few of them boxes, to be fair. Like, I probably was a bit more stupid when I was a bit younger. I've still got that in me now. Like, people would say that I'm a bit of a knob is the easiest way to say it. I'm not that a, stupid. A lovable one, though. Yeah, actually, I wouldn't say I'm that stupid or erratic. Nothing like what he did. And he's a forward, you know what I mean, yeah. in that regard. But been relatively sensible throughout my career. If I say career, but I played football a little bit. Yeah. Um, how, how did you start off as a goalkeeper then, though? Uh, was it, quite, no, was it a last pick at PE? And is it not only... really. No, I, just, I was bigger than everyone in year 11. So I played in net and out and at the same time. So when I was younger... Um... But, net, but that were bad running back. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run. This is where I, end, where I end up staying in there. You could, you could play though. I could play was... football. Like predominantly, I played out in there. So for the higher level, so obviously school football and like um, school boys football, so like interleague, I played out in there. So I used to play centre half. Right. But for like for my Sunday league team, I played in net purely because it was just a mess around with my mates. I used to just play in net. Um, and then as I got older, and you were 14, 15, you yeah, were still, you're still rougher at night before, so you went to go in there 100%. <laughs> Just fat, and I didn't like running, never liked running, hated it. I mean, my physique will tell you that whenever you are bleeding, look at me in a kit. He's, he's hammered me enough times when I played against him as well. Um, so when it got to like pre season, when I was like 16, because I'd started playing semi pro from school, um, the, the running was a joke. I remember turning up for pre-season and they were like carrying people up hills and stuff. I went, fuck that. Keepers diving around. I can do that as well, so I'll do that. And that's what I did. I just stayed in there ever since and I, I weren't too bad at it. So I've not done too bad through it. But being a goalkeeper for me, it's changed now, as I said to Jordi. Like, you, know, you, you must get it all the time because obviously, like you just mentioned there that you're a goalkeeper and you played out predominantly. Yeah. And obviously now, everyone looks for, and it does my head in a little bit, yeah, yeah. everyone's like, is he good with his feet? Can yeah, he pass yeah. it? Can he ping a diag? He actually well, can, though. He can do so that. I, I, yeah, I, I know, yeah. but the most important thing is a goalkeeper. Can he save can a he shot? Ball? <laughs> no, I, in fairness, like without blowing me on trumpet a little bit, I think I was that keeper before that keeper was desirable. Like I was always comfortable with my feet because I used to play out in training. I didn't really go in that much, did I, in training? I'd want, I'd want to get involved. One, because I didn't like standing around because John and Bernard Sessions usually were just five-a-side and working hard. So if I'm in net five-a-side... Point with me being we'd there, go on yeah. a run in pre-season with Ramy, <laughs> and we'd come back, and he'd just be like sat on the goalpost, like with a crunchy or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'd be like with a crunchy. Yeah. We'd be like, Have "You not done that?" He's like, "What do you want me to do? I'm a keeper." Like, <laughs> <"Fuck that." laughs> which is weird though, because some of the keepers I'd worked with before moving up to it were all quite professional. So like Sam Ashton, who was at FC when I first started, like early on. Was probably the fittest in the team. He'd be at the front of all the runs, doing all that. that type As a of keeper, stuff. yeah, yeah, like super fit, weighted vest, dedicated. But he, I think the difference with me and a lot of the non-league keepers, they all fell out the leagues and stuff. Do you know, fairly professional. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't quite cut it at that level, but stand yeah. out as a non-league. Whereas I was just some scruff from, from like Manchester, who just backed himself a little bit. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of rested on the fact that I thought I was. All, I always had confidence in myself being a very good keeper. So then when I saw Sam like doing all these runs, I'm thinking, dickhead, make him like a right bit. Because I'm only 16, 17, I'm at the back of all the runs, nearly dying, Yeah. like with all the fat kids and stuff. And then this session, so then when it comes to Rami, I had a bit more freedom at Rami because I was the only keeper there. Yeah. I thought, he can't fucking drop See, that's me. the thing as well, like, if you're the only keeper, obviously, you're not going to get dropped, but who do you train with? Like, so like when all the lads yeah, go yeah, on a yeah, run, yeah. it's not like you've got another keeper to like do nothing, do keeper drills with, especially so early doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Spider was a bit like that. Do you remember John Wersnop? Yeah, of course I do. So yeah, he yeah. was mega fit. Yeah, he yeah. was like, like he took his top off and he was sculpted Shredded, and he yeah, always yeah. like that. But yeah, generally, you'd get the keepers who just did not want to run. That was yeah, me. That was, yeah. I'd take that box. Like, I 
stereotypical fat goalkeeper who doesn't yeah. like running, like hated it. Played on it a lot as well, to be honest. But then when you go higher up in like professional leagues and stuff like that, the the drills that the keepers do oh, are brutal. Like, down, it looks hanging, up. doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, brutal. It's tough. Yeah, it's just it like doing burpees for an hour. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. And like I said, I didn't I didn't mind doing that type of the training, to be honest. Like all the short, intense stuff because you get good recovery, especially in a keeper session. There's usually four keepers, so when you're actually working. You probably get a bit of a respite anyway. So you work for let's say fifteen seconds of a drill, which is a graft. Then you you stood still for another minute and a half before you come back on again. So you're kind yeah. of recovering a little bit, but it just takes out your body more than anything. Like now, how I'm... about diving though? Yeah, like, so like, it, <laughs> I always see I see keepers diving and they land, and I think that's got to hurt. Oh that. yeah, it's best in my eye and yeah. weight as well. Like it does it, but I'm paying the price for it now because I'm getting niggles. I'm I'm out injured at the moment. With a, I started with a hamstring injury. <laughs> And it's moved into my back now, so I've got like a back problem. So I've not played for the whole of January. Um, and especially now as well, I've kind of developed as, a, as an adult around plastic pitches and stuff, training on them all the time rather than like old school on the grass yeah, and all yeah. that. Like it does, like I'm in your knees and your back. You play an Astro every week, don't you? So. Yeah, I have, to, I have done since I've left. Uh, well, yes, yeah, pretty much since I left Chester. Um, that's all I played. I went to Buxton for two years. That was a plastic pitch. And then obviously I had a year at Staley Bridge in between where I am now, but I did my cruise shit there, so I didn't play. So my last four years, three years of my career have all been on plastic pitches. Yeah. Brutal. Not for me, oh, that. Yeah. I can't even, yeah. I don't like slide tackling on them. Never mind diving all the time. Uh, to be fair, I dive a lot less now as well. <laughs> <laughs> and figure, is it going to cost us a game? Oh, we'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, free, we'll, we'll be all right. So how, do you, for that. how do you know Jordan? So, wait, what was You said you started off at FC. So no, my first we, ever club was Main Road. So no, I, we met at college. But we, yeah, so Jordan... You didn't go to college. We met at college. No, I didn't get in. So he didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a football... Obviously, it's a football college. So what we're all in Middleton. Um, Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> so you didn't get in a football college? No. no. So you couldn't get in a normal college because of your brain. You couldn't get in a football college because of your football I skills. I went to the trial. I was, I was class. Scored two. I thought, I've done it. This is me. Football for two years. <laughs> Nah, you're not good enough. I went, what? <laughs> My mate got picked, he's shite. Is it Ash Reese? Yeah, Ash Reese. I'm Matty Williams. <laughs> Truckhead. I was like, what the fuck? You didn't get in? So, no, we never got Which on. college was that? Upward Hall. It's not even a fucking good college. No, it was crap. We went back. So I went. I had to go to Berry College and do a B-Tech. Fuck me. Oh, man. But we went back on a Wednesday to play Upward. I scored. We won one nil, and I was even... I was just bitter as yeah. for no reason, you know, like yeah. when Salford put me off a well bit, I don't know why. <laughs> but I was just like proper celebrating a college game, they weren't even asked. It was I thought it was you lot from the football college, no, you but played we were just Richmond. playing the lads yeah, who yeah. do maths and geography and yeah. <laughs> 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 no, they weren't even playing against them. They weren't even playing against the property. We team. played yeah. against like other clubs and stuff. So our college course was against like you just play against like, Rochdale Academies and stuff like that. So we, yeah. we'd have other college teams, but predominantly we just play against like YT teams. And what were you studying? Clubs. Uh, we did B-Tech in sport. So you oh, train, tra wow, basically yeah. like... Like a, sports coaching. Kind yeah, of thing, yeah. Right? So in the morning you do your football, but part of it when we first started, you got your coaching badges out of it. So you got to a level two as part of the course because uh, the LFA were involved. Oh, with. I think, is that what like Hyde and... Yeah, do exactly. That, now. that was like yeah, that, that yeah. was like the flagship for it yeah, to start it off. One. Like that was really right. popular. So yeah, well, that's what everybody else in. does now. <laughs> Jordy never got in. I got no, in as a keeper no. and as a as a player as well. So <laughs> two positions for one, he couldn't even get up. So, well, I've shanty he can play ball. Do both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I ended up playing up front for bleeding college. I only played one year. I was there for two years. First year I played in net, and the second year I was up front. Played up front for what, like 16, 17 year old, something like right. that. But by that point, I was already playing semi pro. Like because I was. A, I think I'd started my second year. I'd started playing at Ramy. It's like I'd gone on loan from FC to I'll say on loan. Fucking FC didn't want me, but I went down to Ramy, and um, so I got used to playing like a lot of men. But then in college games, they're all kids, so like I just bullied everyone. Just yeah. like bang, get out of the way, you muppet! Like, and no one would come near me. Yeah. I had skin, pretty much a skinner back then as well. Right, little scruffy. That's the only way I could describe it. <laughs> And people were terrified of me. Like I looked like a, a man compared to the guys I was playing against. Yeah. So I scored like thirty odd goals as a, as a fat goalkeeper. Oh, he was up front then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As a fat goalkeeper, yeah. <laughs> playing on a Saturday like semi pro as a goalkeeper and then scoring. See, that pisses yeah. me off even more that I didn't get in. <laughs> so what was it like at FC? Because that would have been bit that 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 must have been right at the start of thing. Yeah, when, yeah. When yeah. Gig Lane, bit, yeah. So at Gig Lane. Um, and oh, I forgot they started at Gig Lane, mm. didn't they? Oh, the crowds were good as well. Like I said, my my first game for them was at Woodley Sports um, in the cup game. So I think it's called like the Dooston Cup or whatever it is for the league they're in now. Craig yeah. Dooston. Yeah. Because we had Renault, didn't we? On we had Renault the yeah, other yeah, week, yeah. and Renault just, just signed a new two-year yeah, contract yeah, yeah. after. 
complaining that they have got no money. Yeah, got, <laughs> I, I work with him, so I worked at FC. I lost, <laughs> I lost my job, so I'm working at FC for a little bit. Um, working with Renault when, when he got made full time did he talk, I, I, to be fair I've not watched the full one yeah, yeah, he just, he just says time, that yeah. we'll get some decent players in when we clear this debt in 2036 they're never going to clear yeah, that debt yeah. ever they like, signed a two year deal I, I think Renault. it comes down to like fans own clubs I, I just don't think it, that concept works he's got legs on it to a certain point and I think like you hit like a ceiling with that fan zone model yeah, but, yeah like, I feel for, he's a good guy Renault he's a good guy but yeah so I went playing at Woodley um, played my first game I think we got beat in the cup game but it was all the youth team players so like FC didn't want to be in the cup got beat and then that was the year I was at Ramy and Ramy finished second that year my first year there um, and I got called back to... Did John Ron Bernard it? Yeah so that, John Ron Bernard then. brought me in but John Ron Bernard didn't see me playing um, for FC they saw me playing for a Sunday team so I used to play for a team called Langley Celtic and like the you know, like Sunday champions like good good standard to be fair all the semi-pro lads from the Saturday used to play in it Yeah and we played at Salford. Salford was our home gate, uh, our home ground for that cup game because you had to play it like a, a ground with a turnstile and stuff. So Salford back then um, was where we used to play. And Bernard saw me on the Saturday, on the Sunday, sorry, and he just said to me, "What are you doing on a Saturday?" So I was like, I'm sat on the bench at FC, like, so we got to come into us at Ramy. Um, went down, met, met John and Bernard. They picked me up from McDonald's. I love how Bur- <laughs> I love how Burns going scouting on a Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. Scouting. I'm like, picking you up from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Sound. yeah, I can't understand that. Like lads who are being paid on a, a Saturday, even if it's like 30, 40 quid or whatever, then getting up on a Sunday and playing again. I used to get more money for playing on a Sunday than I did for a Saturday. You get paid for a Sunday. Yeah. yeah, I used to get paid like 50 quid. How do you get paid for so a Sunday? S- the Scouters. Now, have you not seen that Dovecot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the Dovecot are playing the Pineapple. <laughs> what, is it two pubs? <laughs> two pubs in Liverpool. Right. But it's in like the S- Sunday League National Cup yeah, semi-final. Yeah, like Champions, yeah, yeah. So there's like, I think, I'm not grassing him. Uh, I know who <laughs> plays on the Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who play, they play in like Conference North and they play on the Sunday. Do they? Mental. Well, so yeah, paid yeah, it's yeah. going to be a Sunday league game, Dovey versus the Pineapple, and there's going to be like 600 scousers with pit bulls and that. Watching. Yeah, it's mad. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it's ruthless. It's going to go off. That's this Sunday, I think. We played in it. I played in Crockstuff. Uh, Army was talking about. Yeah, yeah. He was chatting. So Army got booted in the head while he was on the floor, broke his hand, all kicked off. Uh, Sunji Moses was playing as well in that game to go for a topic, but he just bought a brand new five series. So as it's kicking off, he's just pelting up and don't let me fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> pelting up the path. You want no fucking of it? And he just shot off. When it's all kicking off, I had a lad behind the net pull a knife out and he'll shit himself during the game. Don't you fucking go anywhere. No worries, mate. <laughs> right here. I'm not getting involved with anything. Did I am a shit bag. Pu- pulled a knife Someone on you. Knife out of his pocket. I'm, I was only 18 or 17 at the time. I was terrified of like, all these grown men fighting from Langley and Middleton. Yeah. They can all handle themselves. I've not had a, grown, not had a fight yet. I was 17. I was terrified. And he just pulled a knife out. Don't you go anywhere. I'll sound mate. I'll stay right here. Shit myself. Everything. Just like terrified. But yeah. yeah honestly, it's mental. After the game, though, games. Soundly took us to the pub. We had a beer and that. We ended up beating them as well, I think. Uh, I think they were called Lobster, which are quite a big side as well in that little The Lobster, league the Pineapple. Oh, do you know what? I know about the Lobster. Something to do with Rooney's yeah, cousins yeah, or something. Giving it all that, yeah. weren't they? <laughs> 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 so bad, oh isn't it? bloody hell showing your age there yeah that's, that's a, what that is it's a good dad joke so <laughs> did you sack the Sundays off yeah so um, put it back I went to Ramy um, I was talking about FC weren't we so at the end of that first season um, I got recalled so FC like kind of said we need him back because Sam Ashton who I spoke about before he got sent off and FC were in the playoff positions at that point. He's like, well, we can't sign a keeper now because it's gone past that time. So Shents is the only one who's on it. But like I said, I was a kid. Um, so, so, so we have to play him for a default. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so we're going to put him up top. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's all he could do. So I went in. I played my first game was at, at home against Kendall at Gig Lane. But obviously oh, with, the, with the way the playoffs work, whoever finished higher got a home game, didn't they? Yeah. So that's the way they wanted to do it. So they've gone in and they wanted to win the game. So they'd already secured a position, but they wanted a home tie. And I think we got beat 2-1. But I had a good game, saved a pen or whatever, and did all relatively okay. And we had uh, Bradford Park Ave for the semi final away uh, midweek. I kept a clean sheet, played really well. But then I went on holiday then on the Friday. So I went there for the playoff final, but Sam's ban was up by that point. Um, but, oh, you, we, must have uh, been gutted that you booked where you were going. I, I can't even remember. I think it might have been something Tenerife, like the wife had booked it, and then our wife had booked it. Um, I think we went away with the in laws as well, or whatever it was. Right. But there was a stage Nightmare. when they talked. <laughs> so Andy Walsh, I, I think. <laughs> yeah. So Andy Walsh was the chairman at the time. I'm pretty sure said would pay for me to change the flight um, to be in the squad. But obviously Sam being available, um, I think it just made it easy just for him to say it's all right. Just you yeah. go. Like, they just dropped me anyway. I can't imagine that I played like 
at the time, I think it was Carl Madison. Yeah, it will have been Carl Madison as a manager. So he's never going to drop Sam right. um, in that situation and just take How did you get on in the final? They got beat 1 0 off Col- Colwyn Bay away, it was as well, uh, when Colwyn Bay used to be in it. So they got beat 1 0. And I've secretly thought, fucking. Happy. Fucking yes. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but like not so much. Like, I was a bit of a knobhead back then, though. And then obviously, when I went back to FC that year, I thought I did, I proved that I could play. I was expecting to be at, at least competing to be starting in front of Sam, but probably naive on my part because Sam was a very good keeper. And Marge just went with him, so then that's when John Owen Bernard offered me a contract at Rammy. Um, so they said, Come in with us. Um, Rammy had never put I played on contract at that point, so it was a bit of a strange thing to. So, Harry, you both know Harry. Harry, Harry. Harry. right on a napkin. Fucking Shenchin, fat little shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not putting him on contracts. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then, then ended up doing it. And, He's yeah. an absolute ledge around yeah. like Love him. that. Class. Yeah. Love him. He's brilliant. Yeah. It's Needs for... Send him a get well soon as well because oh, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, just broke his hip. Yeah, yeah. I heard that. Yeah, yeah. he had a fall. I can't remember where he was, but he's had an opt on. He's all right now, though. He's at home. Yeah, he's sad. Yeah. He's about he said, 105, isn't he, as well? <laughs> he's, he's in at Rammy 104. He years. said, I've asked Carol if she'll get me a glass of water seven times. She's been kitchen seven times. I've still not got a fucking water. <laughs> <laughs> he's, top. Uh, he's a good guy. Yeah. So how did you find John and Bernard there when you went? Is that is that the first time that you met them? Yeah. That was so their first year of managing. That, second. That was so I, second. I was there for their second because they got it midway through the season before yeah. Um, before I joined, that's when Dom Smalley when signed he, there. And when stuff. he scouted you at Sunday League. Do, do you know yeah. what? I don't even think it was a scouting thing. I think it was Dom, because obviously I was at college with Dom, and Dom was already playing for him at Ramey. And I think obviously they must have said to him, so I think it was Martin Campbell, who's keeper coach now, directly yeah. for you. He was in net at the time, and Martin was a good keeper, like established at that point. Um, as quite Because it was North West Counties, he was well known as being a very good keeper. So to bring me in, who yeah. not really played that many games, probably no more than 15 games semi professional at that point, uh, to put me on a contract. And then. Martin, see you later, take care. It was yeah. a big gamble on their part. I um, just want to stick in my head that Bird was scouting on a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stick him in it. A big long <laughs> Mac. <laughs> just scouting talent on a Sunday. I'm going to stick with that. No talent, so they just took me instead. He's a gobby so We'll go with him. What was your... Um, yeah, what were they like first season? They was raw. They was six months into managing, and it was... Do you know what? They were, they were just as ruthless then as they was when they first started. Like... I, I think Jono especially just had that head for management where he only ever thought about the bigger picture and stuff. Like there was no, I used to think they hammered me because I probably was shit as well at certain times. But I always thought that they just knew when to have a go at me and when not to have a go. Because I always buy it back. Every manager I've ever played for will tell you the same thing. I may have been wrong and I may have been fucking right, but I will say, believe in myself yeah. more than anything. Even if I fucking know I fucked up secretly, just to hold face because I'm a bit of a swat I'm like no somebody else has fucked up if I fucked up it's because half these lot have before me so yeah. I, I always had that attitude then I'm like, me and Phil Dean who we used to play with would argue during the pitch he's at the other end he's just shit cross or what have you so like Jono and Bernard were, Bernard used to make me laugh and Jono used to make me want to hit him so like, that was kind of that's the only way I could yeah. describe it um, but both really good I enjoy playing for both of them they made me fall in love with football and non-league and what it could be to really enjoy it, especially along with like a working football life because I was never going to be able to do the professional stuff full-time. So non-league was definitely going to be for me, but that was like the benchmark of where I see what I want from a manager. For me to do my best, I kind of need to be at the standard they were at, which I always loved. Like, yeah. John O said to me from early doors, like a couple of times I'd be like, oh, what do you say? No, you need to get to our standard or fuck off. Like, it's as simple as that. Like, it, it is what it is. You go, like, obviously we've got rid of Martin, we put you on a two-year contract. I don't mean you're safe. You still need to fucking so do that, your part. That, that's what I love about John and Bernard. Even at that level, their standards are so high, aren't so they? Yeah, high. oh, they never dropped, yeah. never dropped. We did the run, I had the big fight. We, well, not fight, but me and John all pre-season, remember that? Yeah. <laughs> so they sent us on a run. Now, obviously, I've just said to you before, I don't like running. Yeah. So we did this big run round, Berry for pre-season. It was like a 15k, though. It's not like It's a, a big old run, yeah. guys, like, and yeah. I was struggling for it all, every yeah. bit of it. So we get back, and he's like, we're doing a bleep test. So in front of everyone, I was still young then. I went, no, I'm fucking not. He went, what do you mean, no, you're not? I went, I ain't doing that, John. He's like, I'm fucking hard. I went, I'm not. So he got in my face, didn't he? Well, gripped me. Went on for about 10 minutes. I'm like, are we starting or what? <laughs> so I'm not. You are. I'm not. You are. Exactly. It like was that. like that. It genuinely was, it? was like But because like it was in... Oh, did you hear it in background? Because everyone's, yeah. Everyone stood round and he gripped me. 
I'm going to fuck off me. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And so, <laughs> it, so he sent the lads on like a little loose or whatever before they did it. So he didn't even chance. Why have you done that? I was like, what do you mean? He went, if you just said to me two seconds from the side, you didn't want to do it. I just not let you do it. You can't do that in front of everybody. It made me like a dick. So I was like, all right, fair enough. I was like, I've got to do it. He went, no, you're all right. You don't have to do it. And then <laughs> we had this little gay little exchange. It was weird, but yeah, no, it was funny. And that kind of shown another side to John. I'd not seen at that point yeah. where he was ruthless, but. It was more a bit the appearance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I knew at that point I, I definitely overset the mark, and there's a way of doing something. So yeah, it was funny though. Thanks for it. Good stuff. <laughs> it was such a weird bunch that it was like our striker was doing it in a pair of toms. Remember toms? Like, yeah, the, the, the shoes. Soles, like yeah. the espadrilles. <laughs> Our striker did like a 10k run in them because that's all he had. <laughs> around swim shorts Berry, as well. Around yeah, like Berry on the road. <laughs> a swim shorts and espadrilles, yeah. So he did a 10k run. We were all like, what's going on? And then we'd come back. He refused to do running. He was like, I'm going to go and do my own keeper session. So he was like... He was oh, like, I, thought, yeah, I forgot he about that. with his hands on the pulse. <laughs> Like this, he's like, I'm going to do a keeper specific session. <laughs> so we like, right, whatever. He just walked over to the post, held on to it, started like, lifting his legs up. Do you remember Rocky Montage, yeah. he like, do his body? I thought, fucking do that for my course. I just feel Dean. Cool that. sit-ups, <laughs> M-Shents, you fat dick. <laughs> Everyone oh, It was just comedy, yeah, it was mad. But it we did well, didn't we? we? Do you know what? Punching above our weight massively. Like, we're just a team of just... Idiots, won't we? As simple as that. Like people tell stories. Like I tell stories to lads who I play with, and no one can genuinely believe how successful we were with the lads we had. Because yeah. there weren't many good footballers. In I the think team. that's the biggest thing, though. Like spirit in it in the dressing room. Oh, definitely. Like Jordan put a group in yesterday about um, it's our ten year anniversary. When we got promoted the year we got promoted out of. Uh, was it like the North, like Evo Stick North? I think it was at the time. No, it was it? Evo Stick. I think we went into the conference. It, no, we went into the oh, Prem. Right, yeah, 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 Prem. yeah. You started the WhatsApp group, did you? For it? No, no you I did. did. I had oh, to nice. fucking like I don't, all that. I don't no, have any I numbers. Just let it go. It's a little. I'd have, I'd have seven WhatsApp groups if I did all them. I'd have ten. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a shit team, so we we want to reminisce on it. And it was not so much just the playing; it was more like the changing, like the trip we did when we went to Nuki after it. It's like. Memories and stories when you tell all the yeah. lads you play with there, everyone's not probably envious of it in a way because it's hard to match that camaraderie we had at that team, yeah, without forcing it. It was just completely natural. It's a load of idiots who'd got together and they happened to be all right at winning games of football for 90 minutes. Wouldn't it be class if you could start like a, a reality program and you dropped a top professional? <laughs> Into like a Rami United, yeah, yeah. you know, at them times, yeah. And he'd turn up, and you're like <laughs> watching him. He's doing, <laughs> he's doing, a, he just he's doing a bleep test. He's doing his sit ups. You've got Gas Stopfer if we accord at front of the bus going down to Newquay. You know, yeah, I just yeah. love to drop him in that environment oh, and just say, right, you're gonna spend a month with us. They, just, they'd either love it or hate it, wouldn't they? They'd just be like, I think they buy into it. I think that I think getting the I right think they'd hate it to start yeah, off yeah. with, but by the time they left, they'd be like. I can see why you I couldn't not love this. it. Yeah, you couldn't yeah. not love it. I think because, like you say, we all love football for playing, don't we? like we all play football because we enjoy playing it. But everyone who I speak to is retired or not involved in the game. They all say they miss the changing room more than the playing. That's like, the only thing everyone I miss. Says it. Yeah, I don't like a little bit of the like competitiveness, like that drive to train hard to yeah. work to something at the weekend. But what I miss most is just the crack in the dressing yeah. room, and that just. Gets a bit lonely when you retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it sounds like. No, no, I get it. I do get oh. it though. <laughs> no. It was very sad. Got no back in music for it. <laughs> I think that says more about you than it does yeah, about it. Yeah. Just going back to that um, 10k run, I once turned up. So Mickey Mellon will back this up. We had to meet at a uh, pub car park in Fleetwood. Like he took us up. Like I can't remember where it was, but it was. And we were doing exactly the same, like a big 12k run off, yeah, yeah. whatever. It was a long run. It took it took well over an hour. And I turned up, gone to my boot, and I'd left my my training bag at home. So I had I had my moulds. So I had and we did a road run. And we're going over like these little like hills and also yeah, yeah. I did the whole lot in me in my moulds. <laughs> in my mouldy boot. Oh as you could hear. So everyone's running, oh as you could hear. <laughs> Like this, on the back there. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the gaffer pulled me. Went, Sense, what what, what are you, you doing? doing? And I was like, oh, I didn't want to tell you, gaffer, but I forgot my trainers. And he went, You've done the whole running, then. I was like, Yeah. He was like, 
Fair play. Fair play. Yeah, yeah, fair play. Yeah, yeah. Fair play. Yeah. You just tell me what I just said. Don't I'm not going to let you some trade. That's, that's yeah. the professionalism, though, isn't it? Most lads in non-league would be like, oh, fuck it, I'm not doing yeah. it then. Like, I get that. That's class, that, though. It was like that Dumb and Dumber moment where he'd have gone, well, I've got two pairs of trainers here. Hang <laughs> <laughs> you know, on two pair of gloves. If you'd have told me. I just, I'd have been like, Gutted for a 12k run anyway, and as soon as my boots went there, I'd have been like, Oh, yeah, what a guy Buzzy. I am for getting them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that though. I only turn up in flip flops now for training for the last six years of my career. I've only turned up to training in flip flops because he's like, Well, bring your trainers just in case. I'm like, No, I'm not being <laughs> stupid. Yeah. I'm not stupid. Did you bring your trainers? I've got my flip flops. Of course, I've not. I've got my flip flops on. I'll, not stupid. I'll go the <laughs> it's not my first rodeo. Yeah. <laughs> I've got to do some volleys and sit ups. Yeah. So, where did you finish in that first season then? Um, first full season. Uh, we got promoted, so my first full season was my oh, first year of contract. Yeah, so we won the league in the counties. Uh, that's when, when I didn't when, get on. That's when Jordy was dirty in his knees to make it like he played in the last game. In the pitches, he's on the bench. <laughs> what? So because we got the pitch, I was clean, and all the, it was like a mud bath. So I just, as they won, they were all celebrating together. And I just jumped through the mud and got on the pitches. <laughs> like <I played. laughs> so it looked like you were playing. Yeah. So you see in the pitches, sad. all the lads, he's got dirty knees, but no shin pads and socks on. <laughs> that's brilliant. Shirt and tie. <laughs> It were meant, it were good. So we got promoted that first year. Um, what were you, like, do you mind me asking, what were your contract? Oh, yeah. Um, so it was £85 a week, um, my first contract. I got a sign-on fee. Um, so John you got a sign-on fee? Did, yeah. I was like, this is what enticed me into it. It booked me first holiday. So obviously I was a kid then. Um, what was your sign-on fee? Two grand. No way. Swear to hand on that. cash, yeah. Harry, isn't he? So I got cash, two grand two I got. Grand. And then they give it to me straight away. And John, I went, you get the round in then. So I had to get in front of beer when they were in the <laughs> club. You give cash, two grand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buzzing. Yeah. So obviously as a kid, I didn't even know that was possible for me no. at that point. Because I don't really know anybody in the game. Like I was relatively in there on my own. Didn't really have any friends around like that who played football anyway. Um, so like old friends, like school friends. And I didn't yeah. really play football. So I was kind of just alone. I mean, he said, we'll give you two grand signing on plus 85 a week. And then when I got promoted, it went up. Um, I think it was on like 120, I think, or something like that, was the first one that yeah. I signed. But I've said back then, money's not like what it is now in non league, not even close. So that was really flipping out, especially for a goalkeeper as well. Like, you usually see that for like forwards and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. For keepers. Was, that shocked me that. I thought you were yeah. going to say like 200 quid. No, no, two yeah, grand ago. It didn't last long. 200 it, quid in a pie or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But no, no, hand on heart, I got two grand. And John, I remember Flanners used to say about his signing on fee. I remember once John O back me up, it was quite funny. Flanners was like, Lancaster, give me a thousand pounds sign. I don't even fucking we give fat shents two grand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You must have been really yeah, crap. Shut up, you know. Flanners was buzzing about his grand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He went, fucking that fat cut there, I got two. You must have been shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's what Go I got. Go on, right. Then. I know you don't want to mention it. Tell us tell us what John O said it called. <laughs> <laughs> So I seen this is what I like about it, John. I seen my <laughs> mate the other day and he said, I was in car park with, um, I was car park with my missus doing big shop on a Saturday. He said, I seen Jono. I thought, oh, Jono buzzing, I'll go and see him. So he said, told me missus put shopping in car and I ran over. As I got there, he went, oh, I mentioned his name. <laughs> <laughs> Bird's fucking angry, isn't she? <laughs> and then he drove. <laughs> just got to see the way. Oh, melted. He's ruthless. Do you, know, do you know why I actually tell that story then? Because I knew you could. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell it without mentioning his, his name. name. No. Oh shit, he's gonna kill me. <laughs> no, nah, he's, he's brutal though. He did it with Robbo. For how, how long did he just? I'm a Robbo. So we had a lad when I was at Rame, uh, oh. four with John Robinson, and. I think for 80% of team talks, all he do is slag off his hair and the fact that he used to like brush his teeth with a fucking <laughs> shoe brush or something. <laughs> but hammer him. No, brutal. Rob all said, I can't drive this week. Can you come and pick me up? So John O's gone, seeing as you're our top scorer, yeah, I'll come and pick you up. So <laughs> John O's got there and obviously Rob has gone, come in and that, come in like meet the family. So John O's like, really nice. Hiya guys, hiya. Got to, got to think he went, right lads, I've just been in Robbo's house. Fuck me, it's a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> so Robbo sat there and he's like, I've just let him in and made him a brew and he's just hammering me. Short, right? He's like, he's got wood chip on the walls. I can't even drink the brew. <laughs> he's mad, wasn't he? And he got some new, like Robbo, we, we used to call him like, he was like Shadrach, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was, like, yeah, he was. He was just so funny, but so minging, it was funny. And he got some new boots for once. Brought them in. He brought the full box and everything. Though. <laughs> oh, not still in the box. <laughs> yeah, in the box to, to say like, I've got some new <laughs> boots. Everyone put them down in change rooms. Went out to look at the pitch. Come back in. 
<laughs> or the lads had planned, but Jono had put the groundskeeper's <laughs> work boots in the, in the box instead. <laughs> so we started, everyone's quiet. And he went, come on then, Robbo, you all want to show us. Show us your new boots. He went, just a little pair of umbrals, opened it, it just the groundskeeper's boots in there. <laughs> and he went, they're smart for you, Robbo. <laughs> it was just shit like, before the game, it was just... It was carnage. like a stand up, yeah, wasn't it? It was, it was carnage, unbelievable. Yeah. Like, it was just very amazing. rarely spoke about the other team or any game plan. Like I don't remember any. But like thinking back to then, it was purely just the this is the team. Go fucking I think like General Bernard though. Obviously, as they got higher and higher, you get more into like yeah. the opposition and yeah, tactics because yeah. you have to. But them two just bought into you work your ass off. You believe that you're good enough. You believe yeah. that you're going to win. Do everything you can to win and we'll win. Yeah. And that were kind of... you got to give them the credit. Kind of I, them, I think they just it? knew the type of play that would fit in with what they were doing. Like, yeah. That's the way I would look at it. Like, when they got the promotion, obviously... Probably why I didn't fit in well with them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, John, what, what, why is it not about me? <laughs> what, am I, what am I doing? Documentary about me. You live in Salford, no, What can you do for me? <laughs> But again, that, that's what I think they do better. I think that's what they've done best whenever they've, if you look where they go, they kind of, it's like a blueprint of how they bring players in. That's why they use him so much because if, they know exactly what they get out of him. So it's yeah. trying to find the players that kind of meet meet that in that respect for them too. Talking about Salford there. Yes. Just talk about when it, <laughs> when it finally comes to an end at Ramy and they took, Ten of the everyone. They took yeah. ten, ten of the, the starting eleven. Yeah, and you was the and one was that missed out. Well, you do you not remember you rang me. You rang me before they announced they were leaving, saying what we're going to do about these contracts. <laughs> so I so said, me and you were the only ones on yeah. contract, weren't we? So what we're we going to do, Shen? So I was like, what, what do you mean? I had no idea they were going at this point. So I was proper in the dark. But obviously he was close to Jono and stuff, so he knew before I did. So I don't know what you're talking about. So then he said, yeah, well they're going to Salford. I went, what? I'm fucking on contract, mate. I said, I'm not going anywhere, mate. Oh, it's so bad. <laughs> I'm like, but they'll buy you. You're a forward. Yeah. Who's buying a goalkeeper in non-league? That's never happened. Yeah, we're going to take him. We'll get him. And then yeah. I'd turn up with fucking curly teeth and fat belly. <laughs> like, Salford have just invested. But to be fair, I nearly came to Salford when Phil Power had the job originally because Wodge was there, remember? Yeah. So Danny Warren did it. I can't remember who was the original goalkeeper then. <sighs> was when, it when not, I, not um, a oh, big bodybuilding chap? What's his name? Oh, I always forget his name. Bit of a loose cannon. Big body. Not spider. No, no, it weren't him. No, it weren't him. He's from Salford. I can't. Remember, I can't remember his name. Um, he oh worked... yes, it was. Funny guy. Can't remember his name though. Oh, Long hair, what, right Rubes. big. Rubes. 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 Yeah, yeah Rubes. That's it was. It. So Rubes was in there at the time, but then uh, Phil Power um, had said to Wash. He like, had a body know, as well. Huge, huge. Mate, he was a big I guy. I think he started doing like men's health or something. Yeah, he's a, a PT thing. Like that, something yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he's a big old guy. But he, Rubes, um, yeah. Karen contacted me while I was on holiday at the end of that year. So um, I weren't on contract the end of that season. So I was free to go to Salford at that point, but we just got promoted. So obviously You'd we signed a contract. So no, I've not signed it yet. So we got promoted um, that obviously 10 years ago now. And then I'd gone away on holiday and whilst I was away, Karen contacted me saying, listen, we want to have a chat when you get back. Uh, would you be interested? And then John O'Bernard knew that they'd spoken to me. So then John O just came up to me saying, listen, what if they offered you? What, what are you going to do? What if we could match it to stay here? So I was like, all right, well, just, just put something on, on the table. All ah, right, so this is this is before John O'Bernard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they offered me another contract. So this was like the last one that I signed Brammy. Um, happy with it. Just sign that there. <laughs> yeah, and that was me. Yeah, we're going to Salford. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it felt though, wasn't it? Because it was so quickly after it. Signed the contract, said no to Salford, like an absolute... Enjoy it here. <laughs> yeah. We're off. <laughs> but my wife as well, she hates me for this because obviously she was telling me to go. She was like, well, they just took over. She said, they're only going to be going one way then, surely. But then I, I was being very naive thinking, no, we just got promoted, right? We're on a good thing, like, got a yeah. good team, teams together. We didn't, enjoy- to, I- we didn't want it to come to an no, end. No, I was like, I think I was on about 200 and like 10 games at that point as well as something I was like no I really want to stay I'm really loving it like and it was more about like say the changing room side of it rather than just the football yeah. I loved it because I could do what I wanted mate we finished the game I'd spend half my wage in the club before I'd even go home yeah. and the lads used to, so Housen and Ayrsie yeah. if we won on a Saturday they'd be like well before the game they'd be like nah we're not out tonight but then if we won they'd be like eight pints in the club after then walk to my house and put all my dad's clothes on for a night out in Ramy. <laughs> So like, yeah. like, one night, I think there was like four or five players in my dad's clothes. In the <laughs> but Ayrsie wouldn't even go home. Ayrsie's wife would be on Monday. He's not come home yet. <laughs> Just like mad. But well, that's like, what he was well, like. When he gets to the game on Tuesday, we'll let him know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you might see him Friday. Yeah, so then obviously we got that phone call on the Friday off Jordan. 
saying they were going to Salford and they had, we weren't playing at Ramek because it was, was it flooded or something at the time. Some, we weren't playing anyway. Um, and then they sat down in front of all the fans, didn't they? All the fans were crying. It was weird. They literally had fans crying. Like, there? Yeah. Five like, years. Diehard Ramy fans, like, in tears, like, I can't believe you're doing this, da, da, da. And They got a bit of a thing, didn't they? Like, oh, when they were there, they were like, proper, why like, are you leaving friends? us? Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And they were all like, it was what? a bit awkward, really, because yeah. like, I'm thinking, what you saying? Just ram me or salt for that. Shut up, you, you knobs. Yeah. Like, have a, have a think about it, let's be honest. <laughs> so then they all went, and then we went to the changing room after that, didn't we, George? So after they announced they were leaving, um, right, go into the changing room. Harry's got something to say. So then Harry brings him Robbo, who we were talking about before. <laughs> yeah, would you? So, so. <laughs> oh, is it him? It, what a player, though. In with the, the boots in his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, right, so okay. Robbo then comes into that the changing sense. room. The whole story makes sense now. But we're all sat we're all sat around in the changing room. So uh, Rami's changing room, port cabins, wasn't it? So it's very narrow, tight changing room. We all come in, we're all sat around talking about what's just happened, what's going to go on. Like, Obviously, no one else is there, so they're all planning, right, we're going to go to Salford, this is what we're going to do. We just got out of that league, so we're just going to go and do it again with Salford, because obviously it was a drop down from where we were at the time. So <laughs> Robbo comes in, and he stands at the head of the table, there used to be a table in the middle of the changing rooms, didn't there? And he stood at the head of it, his hands on his table, and he went, I'm the new manager. <laughs> And without a second's hesitation, everyone in floods of laughter. Just <laughs> laughing like the their heads off. Of it. It was, everyone just went, ah! <laughs> And the reality sets in for me. I'm sat there like, I'm fucking stuck here. So you're thinking, anywhere. you're thinking, all these 10 lads are going, I'm the only one stuck with him. I'm just here manager. now, just me and him. I love him to a bit, Robbo. He's a oh, top class, guy, yeah. honestly. I'd love to have played under him. Lovely, hilarious. lovely. <laughs> we played Stafford away, four games to go in the how, season. How did that feel, though? Because you, you were near the top, weren't you, when they left? Third, yeah. I think we got beat off Namwich, was John O'Burn's last game. I think we got beat 5-0 away at Namwich. Namwich pumped us, you don't remember? Yeah, they had, like, Osborne, yeah, yeah. Hancock. They, like, they battered us. Team. I think Burnsy got an at-trick that game, or close to it they absolutely battered us and that was the last game so I think we were third at that point but still doing really well Yeah. Um, and then obviously the whole team left everyone left and come to Salford and then I won't mind if we had a manager who knew people at the time but Rob was from Salford he only knows Sunday league players so <laughs> I, I didn't have a clue what type of player we were going to be bringing in but when, the, when they all left it was a big flood in Rammer so we didn't play a home game for like a month and a half so we only actually played two oh, games. Oh, that's right. The 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 river burst, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Up to the remember. goalpost yeah, on one end. Yeah, 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 literally flooded. So we didn't play for a month and a half at home. Um, and then Robbo, we put a team together. And do you know what? The team weren't that bad. It weren't, I could probably do a disservice. It just weren't as good as what we'd had. And I had this, I, I was a bit of a knob, to be fair. Like I was very bitter about the fact that I weren't allowed to go and all this type of stuff. And we just about survived. But we, we, going back to Robbo you slightly. You fourth from bottom, didn't you? Or fourth, fourth or fifth, yeah, something Imagine like that. From, yeah. Third. from third. From third. I think after you left, I think we only won two games. And you came, he, and they left after Christmas, weren't it? Yeah. After, like, so it was only a few months, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. literally. That's how bad it was. Lost and every game. We were just constantly hammered, but the, and it was just like a revolving door then. And I got something I'd not been used to at that point. Obviously, I'm very tight squad at Ramy wanted. it. Oh, we had 20 players in five seasons. Yeah, that's what I mean for like four years of just having the same lads around to then go into having a back four that changed every single game and stuff. It it was mad and it it weren't easy. Um, Great model from John and Bernard though, isn't it really? Like you've just won that league and they've literally just gone, let's move up there. Let's move all these lads. We had had 15 at Ramy, didn't we? We were like core and then what they do is just pick people who They'd been told are good, bring them in. If they weren't good enough for that, for our group, they'd go and they'd just add a little bit to it. But yeah. just kept that yeah. core. And then they just went, apparently they went to Solfen and said, we need eight, nine, ten Rami lads if we're going to win the league. Yeah. So they went, yeah, do it. There, were, they, there were a point when they were like 10 of us, do you remember the picture they did? Where they were all over 150 games? Yeah. Like, were there? 10 players in the, in the starting 11. So you never see that in non-league games. now, do no, you? No, never. Especially at that level. No. Like, you, you might do the, the topper end of yeah, yeah, yeah. non-league, but everyone... All of them had my dad's jeans on and that. Well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Got bell bottoms yeah. on. <laughs> Honestly, it was the worst clobber ever. Like, you wouldn't wear it. I'd be like, I think he's got these from, like, 20 years. Big chinos. Ago. Proper cord like, trousers. I'll be like, I'll ask what I wear, just give us them. House, that's better than Housen's gear. That's why. <laughs> Did you end up watching the documentary then? Yeah. Yeah, I watched it. Um, obviously, because... They were filming it when we played Jews, wasn't it? Just before you all moved off. We yeah. played Jews in the cup. It's when all that trouble happened with you and Jono and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like, um, I watched it purely just to see myself on that bit because I had an all right game against you. <laughs> made a couple of saves. I hope they were them in it. But I thought it was it was a strange one to watch it because it's all my mates. Was you playing for Rami then? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, I scored against you, you then? Did. Yeah, you did. I did, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. we played us at our place. And I I'm think glad I remember that. I came out and kicked one at Gaz's ass. Gaz uh, Stockford. 
he was running like chasing me down, me thinking I was quick to try and beat him to it, and he was a lot faster than me. Even coming down the hill, I couldn't catch up with him. And out of my net, and he just yeah tapped it into an open net. What are you doing, Shent? Oh, fuck off. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. I wanted to lead last year. Fuck off. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it, was, it was a weird one to watch, you know. Like yeah, seeing all the mates and stuff were. on it, because like, whether I'd have been part of it is up for grabs anyway, because like I said, there were two keepers already at Salford when you all went. So me going and Jay Lynch is a very good keeper. And the lad they had on loan, I can't remember, he was from for Salford while Jay was injured. Well, uh, Jay, Jay Lynch has ended up obviously becoming leagues. a professional, yeah, like, yeah. playing in the league and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, he was, he, he was a very good keeper, wasn't he? He was, yeah. And especially when you look at what Salford were doing at the time with regards to the guys in charge, Class United 2 looking at Jay Lynch, who's going to the leagues, and then <laughs> you and bring then me you over. Yeah. <laughs> you just think, this is who we're going to put in there instead. You think, fuck off, get stay yeah. to me. <laughs> and that's what would have happened. So, it, it, it made sense. And do you know what? I think I've, I've enjoyed my career since then but you'll never know so I'm, I don't have any bitterness towards it you're not bitter then no I were at the time definitely was you yeah oh a million percent like, especially my second year at Ramy when they gave me the option when I thought I was going to leave because I'd already set up going to Stockport at that point um, I spoke to Stockport about going into there because they were doing similar things like restarting with a squad um, Neil Young was a gaffer at the time so I chatted yeah. to him um, and like I said even though we were shit I'd had a very good season so I got in team of the year still as right. that team and I was sh- not even wrong that team was crap but I'd had a standard as a goalkeeper in a bad team you can do can't you like look all right um so yeah i was looking to go and then when rami took out the option i'm thinking you absolute bastards like killed me oh, and then right. i saw salford absolutely flying obviously he's won the league that year yeah i got promoted and i'm just getting relegated at the other end of it it was awful didn't didn't enjoy that was the wor- my worst year in football and have you spoken to john and bernard about that yeah, we, we spoke about it before. Like I said, I also went to Chester with him um, a couple of years after that. So I was right. chatting about it, but not. it's more of a personal thing. It's nothing personal from them too. They were just hands tied. And I was never, I wouldn't ever consider myself a John Owen Bernard player in regards to the way Jordan is, where he's like friends away from him. Like it's more yeah. like, in essence, a professional relationship. Really good with them both, talk to them both outside the game, but never that friendly where we talk about how it affected me after it because I had my own thing going on there. Yeah. Like, I was kind of looking to do what I wanted to do myself. How would you find. Chester, because Chester were in a, a bit of a like just coming through a, a bit of a revamp as well, yeah, weren't yeah. they? Well, that's a fan fan Fandom. zone club like yeah, we talked yeah, about yeah. before. And the potential of the club is a joke. Like you played there yourself, so like you'll know. Like the fans here, in terms of the numbers and the loyalty, it's fucking brilliant. It really yeah. is good. And that's how they obviously excelled when they first started. But I just think there's, there's a such a with the fans model. Is you can only go so far. You need investment, especially now in the modern day game with the amount of people who are throwing money into the game. Yeah. Like you do need like. The, the unfortunate bit is, is, is that at that level, and we just touched on it there with like loyalty. At that level, if someone's being offered fifty hundred quid to go somewhere else, yeah, they're gonna do it. So if you if you fan owned and you've all got to come with a committee and how much you can spend yeah, and yeah. how much you can offer this person, and the old fans go, Ooh, well, <laughs> oh, I'm not doing that. Yeah, yeah. The player won't come. No, no. You need somebody who's going to come in with a load of money and go, just get the best yeah. and get a team together and we'll get through the leagues. And I don't I don't mind throwing money at taking it and losing hit. it. Yeah, you're taking that Whereas fans, their own money, which is brilliant because that's kept the... Of course it is, yeah, you know, yeah. And they work hard for it. But expect, expecting fans to lose money, yeah. it's, you can't do it. How does it work? Like, Obviously, they don't go... All in favour of signing this player, so well, yeah, basically. But well, 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 no, what they'll do, they'll go, they'll have a, a committee meeting and say, right, okay, we need an extra ten thousand over the next whatever, and to get this lad. Yeah, and they've got to, oh well, or improvements to the ground or wages, yeah, and yeah. so then they've got to what the priority? They've got to vote on that. Yeah, like they won't vote on an individual saying like, oh, we're going to bring in Jordan Hume who can put like a quid in each. <laughs> Do you know what I mean extra? <laughs> It'll be like a load, of, and then they'll say, "Yeah, okay, we've got, we can raise ten grand in next whatever." So all the fans yeah. have to put in. Yeah, it's, it's a tough one. That it's a tough it's, one it's because hard, yeah. it's brilliant because they've saved him. And oh, it's amazing! Yeah, amazing he's done it all done. as well. Yeah, he's yeah. gone. He's gone. And I get the risk <laughs> of it though. <laughs> but you've got to understand they've been absolutely scarred with what happened previously. Obviously, yeah. they nearly lost the club. Similar to what's yeah. happened with Barry now. So you get yeah. why they. Very you cautious get why about they hated you. Like, oh. Well, the eighty <laughs> when we went in there for obvious reasons. Obviously, being Mancunian, I won't say all of them. There's just obviously that Harry Max stand. There's a lot of people behind there now. Me being in the net, I can hear it for at least forty-five minutes when I'm at that end, 
And even in games where we were winning, I'm still getting hammered. You fat shit, Shenton, why are you not doing that? From your own fans. What the fuck? That's the fuck your mum and daddy back. Felt like we're freeing up. Like, chill the fuck out. What are you still hammering us for? Fucking talking, shit. Dude. Talking so, about that, like you've had a, you've had a couple of incidents, haven't you? Where sort of right, like, yeah, fans. <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong, yeah, but he like, went, what stories is he going to have? I went. Well, he's just text me saying uh, he wants bitter fans. <laughs> <laughs> like, Sounds like, like all right, yeah. I'll That's go very that recent, way. that as well. Like very, it was last season, so like, you're in the thirties now. I know, I know. You, you, and you, you, he was hungry. See, now it sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always hungry. <laughs> which is what, what a lot of them have said off the back of it. But like, I've got to add context to it because the team it was against against Berry. So Berry say that a lot, like the keeper bit of fan. And if you say that in an isolated way, it looks bad because of bit of fan. But <laughs> it still sounds bad now when I say it. I don't think you can put it any other way. <laughs> but then when I give you context to it, so obviously it's kicked off near the dugout at Radcliffe. So it's obviously it's tight there and the fans are there. So as it's kicking off, I've come over from my from the goal mouth and everything else and it's kicked off and it died down and it went quite quiet. And then one of the lads got sent off and as he's been sent off, another ruck started. But this time, because it's really tight to the touchline, we just got closer to the barrier. And as I got to the barrier, arms just come right across the barrier and grip me by the throat. And someone had gripped me, but I've got hold of oh, so a fan behind you. Yeah, yeah, but I've got hold of somebody. So I've got no hands, so I can't like, throw a punch. So I, just went, I-, I bit him. And he let go quick as well, like a proper <laughs> chomped on him. And then turns out the lad who had bit, it was, it was his dad. The lad who got sent off, it was his dad. So as I'm going off, you bit me, dad. And he was a big <laughs> as well, this lad. Like, I'm thinking, sorry, mate. <laughs> I was there. And he'd come round his jacket off and he's got this big bruise here. That's what you did. I went, you gripped me by the throat, you knobhead. What do you want me to do? I didn't get sent off or anything, but we had video of it, so Barry were complaining about it. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> Rad- <laughs> <laughs> but Radcliffe sure sent us it. So obviously from the security, we, we had the footage of the guy just gripping me. So it's not like I was just ran over yeah, like yeah. a hungry spree, just biting people. He gripped me by the throat, so yeah, I bit him. And that, 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 that was that. <laughs> Bit of fun, was brilliant. What, what was the other one? Oh, you're talking about Staley Bridge. There's another one where you jumped up. Yeah, you, yeah. You it was that... Took your gloves off. So I got sent off. Jumped over the back. So I was playing against Staley Bridge. Now I've had two stints at Staley Bridge. Um, once when they're in the Conference North, and then uh, another great club. Yeah, brilliant another club. great club. Brilliant club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Shouldn't say that because I played for Hyde, but it is a, <laughs> it's a great club. No, no, no. I get it. And like, it was a it was a funny one because I I'd, I'd left when the club was going through like a transition. They had a new owner coming this year from Grosky, who used to own them. So there's like been a revamp and a lot of fans are coming back now who refused to come because of the previous owner. So first game at Avril where I'm at now. Now Avril's a very small tight club um, in terms of like the stands and everything around it. And three minutes into the game, I got straight red for giving a penalty away. And they've already been at me anyway because obviously I played for them and it was a bit in jest. There was no real trouble there at that point. But my dad stands behind the net with my son. And obviously them fans know my dad from when my dad come watching me play for Staley Bridge and yeah. stuff. So as I'm leaving, I'm, my head's already gone because I've lost my head with the ref because they're absolutely shocking. Like, <laughs> I didn't understand how he'd sent me off. It was mad. So as I'm walking off, I can just see the, the couple, like probably six of them behind the net giving me dad a load of grief. So I'm thinking, what the fuck are they doing? And then I thought, I've been sent off, fuck it. So I took the gloves off, vaulted over the fence and just jumped on a couple of them as they were trying <laughs> to give me dad a bit. So then a couple of them have grabbed me to pull me away. And then, probably my fault, at the end of the game, it all kicked off in the stands afterwards, but I was, obviously I weren't allowed to come into the ground, so I'm sat in like, uh, one of the... Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one like of that. the boardrooms, and it's going off royally there. Um, not proud of it, but you do things in... I think the things with non-league fans, which amaze me sometimes, is they think, if you pay the 10 quid or whatever they pay to come and watch, and I'm just a lad playing in net, you've paid to come in, and they just abuse me and think, that's just okay. Yeah. I'm thinking... There's going to be a point when you're going to get something back. Now, I don't justify what I did. I shouldn't have done that. But I'm only human. If I walk down the street and start abusing me, like people are going to... Do you know what I mean? It's only this... Well, like, I always say, a lot, like, if they're shouting it from the stands, like, would they say it to you in a pub? Yeah, exactly. Face face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like 99% of the times, they wouldn't do so. Yeah. Still, you, you should still have that little bit of respect, even though you're a fan. Yeah, of course, exactly. Like, cause it comes to a point where you go, well, that's... You've crossed it a bit. You've crossed there. the line yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. Chester fans did. <laughs> Yo, Chester fans burn. threatened me in the pub after we beat them. <laughs> you know what you got to the bar? The yeah, the bar yeah. I had to go. I had to leave because they were all threatening me. That, did you play your midweek that time? Is that actually going to actually going to batter you? Yeah, yeah. I had to like get dragged yeah. out, but then obviously Burn come over and a few of us and it chilled chilled out a bit. But he, yeah, he was going for me. Is that, is Wait, it, are you playing for Chester then? No, you're at Alton. No, oh, you're at Alton. Ah, right, I'd okay. scored two. We beat them two one. Yeah, you did. Beautiful. It was lovely Beautiful. stuff. Alton, <laughs> Alton left me to ice, didn't he? <laughs> Class. A little fringe. Yeah. So, Johnny, come back. <laughs> yeah. So as soon as we get into the bar, John O's hammering house and say, How have you let this shit? <laughs> yeah.
fucking <laughs> beat you to the ball twice. And then next thing, Chester fans are all started on me, so it was going off. He kicked funny. a bin once in the chain. I don't know if it was after that game. John followed one of the bins in the chain room and broke it. A piece of plastic at house and on the tube. Bloody hell, John, you cut my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just... <laughs> Probably, used like to the, like, the Alex Ferguson boot oh, moment honestly, he used to hell hammer him <laughs> rip, rip, frickly away when he had a go at him for that striker who had tits you get beat off a striker with tits <laughs> fuck are you doing <laughs> oh, lads, him the he's laughter. got tits <laughs> he did that in change <laughs> who wants Chaz on yeah. oh fucking hell uh, to be fair Alston did at that stage yeah, though no, we'll have done. so one I wanted to get on to is like he's quite a non-league legend, isn't he? I don't know if he goes for the pros, but it's the footman. <laughs> <laughs> I've, heard I've heard about this footman. I've heard about the footman. Yeah, he's a, he's a myth. He's a crazy <laughs> thing. To be fair, it works. It's, it's, if you don't know, you won't believe it. You'd have to experience it. So I signed at Buxton and we had... He only targets certain players from certain clubs. So they've had to have played for a pro club or been on a certain pro club's radar in some capacity and then he'll contact them and they're like non-league or what have you. Foot. So man, the footman. Right, foot that's what he's known. Like people know him. Honestly, it's mad. Right. You'll, you'll get a text or a DM on Twitter, yeah. and they'll be like, "Are you all right? Uh, not should play for these. Uh, would you be willing to do me some videos for some money?" So, like, what the fuck's this about? So Diego, who the lad got text, he went, um, "She hasn't seen a chess site. Is this real? This?" I'm reading the change rooms. I'm thinking, "That sounds real." I said, "Let's test the waters. Like, see what he wants." She's like, "I want you to role play a video of you coming into the change room. You don't know what's happening. All the lads grab you, and then tickle your feet." <laughs> No, he yeah, didn't. I swear to you, I swear to you. No, he didn't. So then, I'm like, should we just do it? He went, no, no, I'm not doing that. It's weird. I went, all right, text him, see who else he'll let do it. I said, I'll fucking get tickled. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, how much is he offering? She's offering like 400 quid a video for like, lads, just get the feet tickled. So I'm like, right, let's do it then. Let's, let's coordinate it. So then I spoke to a couple of other lads. I'm like, right, when Diego goes out, I said, he doesn't know we're going to do this, but we're going to video him. I'm going to cash in on it. So when he come in, we tied him to the fucking physio's bed, tickling his little feet like, <laughs> he's like, get off us, get off us, you bastards. And this guy's like wanting to pay for these videos. But then it started like a trend in our changing room. We had lads stopping on the fucking our shoulder on the way home, tickling each other's feet in the car to send him videos to try no and get his money out of him. One of our lads, I'm not going to mention his name this time. <laughs> <laughs> he went to his apartment with another few lads and they did a live tickle show. <laughs> In went his to apartment the, and they all the, got paid. Went to the footman's apartment. Yeah. Oh, that'd be risky. I won't dare do that. Yeah, but all five of them. Yeah, it yeah, I suppose so. And yeah. so he's... What? This little piggy went to all five of them. I don't even know if it's sexual. I don't know what it's for. I genuinely it's, don't. It's got to be a bit of a weird fetish, but like... It's definitely but, sexual. But the thing is with it, though... He's, dev he's watching that... <laughs> And you know he's I get the feet fetish. <laughs> no, but I get the feet fetish. But he wanted to have like the role play bit where it was a surprise. That played on him yeah. as well. It had to be a surprise. He couldn't know what was happening. It had to be pretend he didn't really know. Yeah. It was mad. I think what, Funny what he said, I nearly said his name. <laughs> <laughs> he said he wanted to stand in the kitchen, yeah, yeah. facing away, so looking at the cabinets, while the other lads tickled the feet, and he wanted to hear them laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so He's the lad who's oh, the lad who wild. went. He's got a video of this guy in his own kitchen just looking at the cabinets, going, "Yeah, ready." <laughs> <laughs> but you can wild. always see back of his head. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, so all the non-league lads will know. Yeah, him. everyone knows what him. Like that, that will get a lot of traction because everyone knows him. Like when I've moved on since Buxton, I've played at a couple of change rooms. Like that happened with us as well with this player and that player. It's wild. That's brilliant. Good that, isn't it? Easy money as well, though, because he paid. Yeah, like, he's everyone paid, got yeah. paid. Yeah, oh, yeah, like transferred straight away. So it's like, right, I've got to do the video, man. Right? We've got to keep, keep milking this channel for the money as long as we can. Yeah. And then you do the video. It's, it's only like a, like a third of it or whatever. A, de a deposit. Then you do it. Yeah, legit, legit, yeah. legit, legit transaction. And then do your video and send it over. And he, he paid and everything on time, everything. Wow. I know. Get your feet out, lad. Get easy. <laughs> well, I, well, no, I'm not meant to know about it. Get him as he comes in through the door. Yeah, I'm not meant to. Take his shoes off. Let's go and grab Corey now. <laughs> Imagine just tickle his tash. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, the funny fuck, guy, the, the foot guy. guy. Yeah, non-league foot guy. I think he was known as that on Twitter, wasn't it? Well, that's his Twitter yeah. handle or something. Uh, he keeps popping up. I yeah. think he gets removed and then he comes back as like Footman 12. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, Footman 13, <laughs> Footman 14. <laughs> it, but oh, it's if like, you're out there. It's yeah, like them people who, um, who like sell... Dirty socks on, on eBay. John and, used to do that. <laughs> John used to have all the last chain. I remember you saying that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> used to cut, John what? used to. He did, I don't know. Have we dropped somebody else in it now? Bring socks, everyone aware of them, then he'd sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Fleet as like, non league lads wearing dirty, dirty socks. Guy, he's mental and he's funny. You know what he's like. 
That's brilliant. That we did, brilliant. What did we do? Everton calls once. We got beat, do you remember? Possibly. I think it was Rami or Salford. And he'd, his head was gone. So, like, he was like, you're getting beat? Oh, fucking Everton fucking calls. Is this where we've got to? But as he's doing it, for some reason... Getting naked, yeah, I was he there. Started, yeah. He took his jumper off, took his T-shirt off. Like, fucking rubbish, all oh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Next thing, whipped his pants down. He's, that fuming, he's getting in shower. And then he went, whipped his boxers down. And all the lads just went... <laughs> massive skidder in his boxers. <laughs> but then after that... <laughs> He couldn't really laugh. He couldn't really go mad for laughing because he was in stitches as well. <laughs> he was like, they're going straight online as well. <laughs> oh, God. They're going straight that's, online. Oh, that's I, thought, sort of, I thought you were going to say, they're going straight in the wash. Yeah, so, <laughs> that sort of online. stuff that we was like, that, that was like weekly. So yeah, like, there's like, always Can you something. imagine like the laughs we had? But then obviously I was the same as you, so I got offered to go FC yeah. before... They went and yeah, I yeah. turned it down because I loved it. Yeah. But then, obviously, when they they let me go, I was bitter. But I'd had that such good times. I was like, am I bitter or yeah, am I not? Yeah, yeah. It was like a weird yeah. one. It was like... Like a FOMO thing, isn't it? Like you're missing out on that. Is that what it's called? Like, when yeah, FOMO. Yeah, 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 like yeah. I know I, I stayed because I loved it. Yeah, yeah. But I was like, why did I stay? But I might have hated it if I went. Yeah, but, exactly. You never know, do you? Yeah, yeah. that was... It's a weird... Like, stuff like that. Though. I don't think I'd have hated it. That's brilliant. <laughs> I think I loved Still it, bitter over there. I think I loved it. Why, it'd be didn't, great. Yeah, why didn't I get involved with the foot guy when I was at Salford? Yeah, the, been oh, you'd have been you'd have been on big dough as well. Big dough for my feet. My Definitely God, horrendous been, yeah. feet as well. Have you? I horrendous. think you liked it though. Like, yeah, like, were... battered, battered feet were good. Yeah. I was like a hobbit. My feet are horrible. Hobbit feet. <laughs> <laughs> so what you what are you up to now then? Where you where are you at with your football, with your football career now? Uh, Avro now. Uh in but we're now Evo Stick West or whatever. It's one below Jordy now. We talked about that before. They're a really run, really well run club, aren't they? Yeah, so I think the... you touched on it before, like if, like a blueprint. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So like in this part of Manchester where we are at the moment, uh, Avro's been like one of the biggest amateur clubs for years. Like I can't remember when it's established. Obviously, it's off, off the old um, British Aerospace, so Avro Lancaster Bomber. It's all started from that's where the heritage of the right. club is as an amateur football. When I was at Walshire Sports Club yeah. and you was like at Main Road, yeah. Avro was like the team, like you didn't want to play Avro. Yeah. Because you knew yeah. they was all from round here. Yeah. So I had never heard of him before. Like yeah. until obviously Army went there. Yeah. And yeah. I misread it. I, I thought I thought it was Astro FC. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was a newly formed yeah, yeah, yeah. No, non-league no. who played off. So I, they've I got it was like, Astro FC. Tell you what there is now though, there's a team. In non-league, that are called like Long Ball United. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, they play ticker tacker. <laughs> <Do they actually? laughs> Don't even boom it. <laughs> but they're called Long Ball. Long, are they Long, long Ball, ball FC? Yeah, yeah. Long Ball FC. That could be my nickname, mate. But I loved Avril because you would. <laughs> you just got that. <laughs> Corey laughing off camera. He said Long Ball. So that that could be my my nickname. <laughs> As I'm getting older, long, they're getting longer. Not Long Ball. Long, long Ball. ball. Long ball. ball. All right. Come <laughs> on, Jordan. Oh, well, Catch up. <laughs> so you, Long when you ball. played Avro, it was like you would play and then you'd go into the bar after yeah, yeah. on a Saturday R5. It was like the Wild West. Yeah. It was like the old Lancaster there was just pure guys from Middleton just, just wild sessioning. And yeah. I was like, this is yeah. class. <laughs> it's because it was in the middle of nowhere, wasn't it, the actual pub itself? Yeah. So the old Lancaster pub where the ground was. So if you can imagine like a big open field with a lot of pitches and then a huge, great, big, like period building that was a pub in the middle of it. And that's what it was. So a lot of people did pre-drinks there. So like lads from Moston, Newton, E, Fails were fall around that area. Used to start there. They drink and watch the game at Avro or what have you, and then they'd all move on. And then head into elsewhere. town or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. it was a mint but atmosphere. Unbelievable place. And then uh, old, so old um, town, whatever the old team used to be, where the ground is now, um, folded. It didn't exist anymore. And then Avro got offered a load of money for the land to put houses on it. So then that was their opportunity then to go semi-pro from like the amateur level. Like they've always been ready for the infrastructure. Like I said, see, the blueprint right. of the club is run so well. They've just, I mean, they've had four promotions in five years. So as soon as they've gone into the non-league, they've just gone sh- straight up. And they're right. only going one way as well, based on the way it's being run at the moment. And ruffling a lot of feathers, like we've had trouble um, with certain clubs and stereotypically big clubs. So Berry, for instance, Staley Bridge being another one. Um, clubs that have a clash with purely because they don't like the fact that we're this little tiny club. 
um, with regards to fans. We don't get a lot of fans. Like I say, it's an amateur football club still with regards to the fan bases and stuff like that. And they're doing everything right to, to grow. Um, not spending too much money. Um, they, they know what their like, the financial restraints are and they're not When you're saying that like, they don't just have one owner, they have, so they do it in so a they got, way, So don't it's they? community run football club in, in essence. So non for profit club. It's got probably 20 odd junior teams, maybe even more. I don't know off the top of my head. And then obviously the first team, which is technically a separate entity because the old first team still exists. That's now our reserves. So that Manchester Prem team still there. It's just our reserve team now. So then the first team semi pro and then the rest of the club still run the same way. So the way the clubs run, the sponsors they have on board, like they're all family run spot, like family run businesses. There's no big investor in the club other than the actual people who are there. So the volunteers yeah. who started the club. The so you were saying before, like off camera, that instead of just having one investor that puts all his money in or whatever, <clears throat> and then if he goes, you're knackered, aren't you? They've got like forty companies who all put a little bit in. Yeah, and it's you know it's they did a before bit more Christmas. sustainable. Yeah, so before Christmas they do a thing like to pay back, so they do a lot of promotional work on the social media handles just to show you all the sponsors. So if you look back on Avril's Twitter feed, for the whole of December you see the vastness of how many sponsors they have who, by the way, renew every year. Like, yeah. Because of the way they do it, they don't ask for too much. They ask for what they need to fit in with their, va uh, their yeah. vision of what they're doing. So they don't overstretch. They don't get greedy and say, we want that because obviously the success they've had since that, I mean, it kind of collides with me signing on, to be fair, the promotion, and then <laughs> we're doing all right again. Um <laughs> <laughs> it all, it all, it's all going on the right trajectory though but and they're not just saying right because there's been a point I put pressure on the manager as well a couple of the other senior lads I've seen we need, we need a forward we need this guy and he's like listen we've got what we need for the budget we're doing what we can and it'll work Yeah. so you've got to respect it as much as I don't like it from a playing's point of view like, if you look at our fixtures this year I think we drew 12 games something crazy we're lacking goals yeah um, because we've had in injuries to forwards and stuff but the club are like no like we've invested our that we know what we're doing that's what we're doing either oh, like it or at least you know or, your next club then jordan yeah there you go <laughs> just signed yeah. me mate as well max Harrow. yeah we have yeah how's he doing loose cannon max <laughs> i love him to bits he's a loose cannon isn't he? he's wild he's not he right kicks off of the week at linnets and max just looked like you were on the brink of killing someone. Yeah. It's so like so his brothers that obviously our coach as well. So Kyle, his older brother, is one of the coaches. So Max has ran over to him. And Kyle's like gripped him. Like, sit down, son. <laughs> You're not going anywhere. I'm not getting arrested. You idiot. Sit down, you know. Again. But yeah, no, he's a good lad, again. Max. He is a good lad. So how, how old are you now, Grant? Um thirty three next week. So you've got a few more years in you then. Uh, am I older than you? Yeah, and yeah. yeah and Which is unbelievable, isn't it? Jesus. I look a lot I've had two kids also since No, I'm, I'm aging like so milk at the minute, me I'm hanging. <laughs> Doing the editing. Well, like, like me, like me stepdad says. <laughs> Frank. It's that air. Frank. <laughs> it's that haircut. It's not helping you, is it? But no, yeah. So I a want to play more years as long as I can. Yeah, like, I kind of set this goal for myself a year ago where I want to play like 700 games. Like that was kind of like me. What you're now? I can't be over 500 now. Um, I don't know the exact amount. I'm not that. Another 200 games is a lot. I'm not that stupid though. I'm not that much of a muppet where I'm like counting my fixtures. I don't <laughs> actually know, but I know based on like appearances I've had, I've got to be close to six. Yeah, you average it, don't you? Turns yeah, I, I can tell you if you haven't got it on the iPad. Oh, have you? Yep. Oh god. So you, but it's nowhere near that, is it? No, you should play 521 games, right, letting okay. 958 <laughs> goals. It's just not, it's not a bad record. I think, I, think about eight, I think about 800 of them were probably at Rami <laughs> <laughs> that last season. Jesus no, Christ! Nobody kidding. No, no, no. But like I say, he's. I think Avro suits me like really well with like my family because my family all come and watch. You know, like I said, my son's twelve now, um, my little girl's nine, and oh, she's nearly nine, I should say. Um, and they come and watch me with my dad and stuff like that. And I love that part of it now. Like, yeah. That didn't really bother me when I was younger. I just wanted to play football and get stupid with all lads. Where now I'm not really on that. I enjoy the fact that my dad comes and watches. Noah talks to me about the game, like what's happened to this dad, and I, and I love that yeah. little. Why'd you, you why'd you let that on through your legs? And that kind of stuff. <laughs> Mate, my daughter's Why the worst. Why are you worst. playing dodgeball? She, she abuses me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm catching it. Dad, are you not allowed to touch that ball? No. <laughs> is it not allowed? Do you know what? I mean, Avro, this is why I think I can still get a few games in. We don't concede goals. Look at our records since I've signed last year. I kept thinking it was like 30. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Said we've got to keep on pushing the career, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially looking like me, because like I don't fit in my kits properly anymore. Like, the kits are getting smaller. Do you not have get. a purple kit on? The yeah, Barney yeah. the Dinosaur. Bar yeah. <laughs> Barney the Dinosaur. <laughs> it was Linny who caught with that. Did I? It like, Barney the Dinosaur, you fat dick. <laughs> that ledge. So, yeah, yeah, you played with Linny, didn't you? Yeah, Trafford, yeah. Belting, yeah. Like, Linny was 
I love him to bits. He's like, brilliant to this. Such a character. Yeah, like, I've, I've mentioned to you before, guys. Like, I, I always fancy myself as quite quick witted in the changing room, like picking up on what people say. Like, I used to love catching Bernard out when he'd fucking yeah. banana slip or whatever he'd say. Like, he used to mess up all the time. This is a potential banana slip. <laughs> Have you never seen a thing you heard? They're on, they're on North West thingy. They're on the like, North BBC West. BBC North West, yeah. whatever it was, yeah. And yeah. they filmed like people at Rami saying, like, the club's doing really well. Yeah. And then them two come on the screen. <laughs> and uh, they go, yeah, we, what we try and do, we try and do the old uh, good pop, bad pop. <laughs> <laughs> and it was live on the news. What? Good he's, pop, bad pop. You're supposed to say good cop, bad cop. But his head just went, because he can't talk proper, bird. He's like, yeah, it's the old uh, good pop, bad pop. <laughs> You're like, what has just happened there on the news? Good uh, pop, bad pop. But that yeah. was where, that's where that video where you come from, on it? Because of Jack with a ball boy. Yeah, so we had like the oldest ball boy in the world. I swear to God, he was like 96. Yeah, he's in his 90s. Yeah. No he, like, if the ball went over, he'd go and get it. But he's on BBC News with a big pole because it's on the cricket nets behind the thing. So the ball's on the net and they've set him up with a big, with his stick. <laughs> Where it down. Yeah, 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 but he's on the news. It was, right. like, it was like some sort of Phoenix Knights. Like it sketch. was, honestly, yeah. it really so was. So John O said, good pop, bad pop. And then it flicks to the 98-year-old ball boy. <laughs> he's got a big pole and he got obviously go, go. And he goes, <laughs> bang, knocks the ball and he goes, when the ball comes over, it's my job to get it down. <laughs> <laughs> and then it flicks to like Harry, and he's making pot of tea. He's making a pot of tea, and he's like stirring it. He goes, "Do you know the secret to a good brew? Six tea bags." <laughs> <laughs> it looked like it was written. I've honestly. got it recorded because it's the best thing in the world. It's comedy. <laughs> but That's so before brilliant. the game, I, me and Wiz got the ninety-eight-year-old man's pole. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah. It's all floppy. <laughs> <laughs> so we threw the ball on the cricket net and I stood there with his pole and I went, when the ball comes over and lands on these nets, it's my job to get it down. So, I swear to God, every year. Once a year it comes up, yeah. Once a year it goes on Twitter and all the lads just repost it. Like stuff like that. Before a game that as well, yeah. before like a big game. Oh, it was honestly brilliant. a carnage. Brilliant. Was brilliant. So, well, do you know what? I really, really enjoyed that. We've gone... We've gone back to his roots a little bit, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, that's Jordan? what I wanted. Yeah, gone back to his roots a little bit, talking about non-league and just, you know, characters in the game. And, yeah, just something different again. It was, I really enjoyed it. Mate, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Having you on. Yeah. Sorry, Thanks very much. Sorry you have to settle for me. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd be good to be fair. As soon as you took yeah. me, I thought, yeah, we've got some stories here. Mate, you, yeah. yeah, you've been the best sub-keeper I've worked with. To be fair, <laughs> yeah, you've done well. <laughs> Number two. Number two. Oh, Mate, thanks very no, much. I appreciate Absolute it. Thank pleasure. Thanks very much, fellas. Grant Chenton, everyone. Cheers.